trigeminal neuralgia is defined as a chronic facial pain syndrome in the distribution in one or more of the trigeminal nerve branches. The trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve, with three principal branches called the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular branches. These provide sensory innervation for approximately the upper, middle and lower third of the face respectively, and the mandibular branch also provides motor innervation for the muscles of mastication. In trigeminal neuralgia, it is thought that chronic loss of myelin at the nerve root entry zone leads to aberrant conduction of signals that are then perceived as the characteristic pain. Overall, there are three broad subtypes of trigeminal neuralgia. The first is classical, making up 75% of cases, where there is compression of the trigeminal nerve root by an aberrant vascular loop that is most commonly the superior cerebellar artery, although presence of this compression can exist without symptoms. Secondary makes up 15% of cases caused by another pathological process, such as multiple sclerosis or a tumour, and thirdly idiopathic, which makes up 10% of cases, where there is no clear cause found. The pain itself is divided into type 1, which is classic, and type 2, which is atypical. In type 1, the pain is described as a sharp or stabbing character that is extremely intense and usually on one side of the face, lasting for seconds to minutes. Only 3% of people have bilateral involvement, and even fewer have it simultaneously. The pain can be infrequent, such as episodically occurring years apart, or can happen many times in a single day. Type 2 or atypical features more of a constant aching or burning that is usually less severe than type 1. The triggering factors can include touch and temperature, for example, tooth brushing and eating. As a result of the pain, people can have reduced intake of food and as a result, weight loss, as well as a risk of mental health difficulty, including depression. Risk factors include increasing age, with a mean age of onset between 53 and 57 years, female sex, with a 3 to 2 ratio of females to males being affected, and it's also seen 20 times more commonly in people with multiple sclerosis. Other potential causes include posterior fossa tumours, arteriovenous malformations or aneurysms, or post-injury, such as trauma or facial surgery. Overall, it is a clinical diagnosis, meaning no specific lab investigation or imaging is needed. However, these may be needed to identify cases of secondary trigeminal neuralgia. According to the International Classification of Headache Disorders 3rd Edition, the criteria for a diagnosis include pain that generally lasts from a fraction of a second to two minutes with severe intensity and electric shock, shooting, stabbing or sharp quality. It must also be precipitated by innocuous stimuli within the affected trigeminal distribution and cannot be better accounted for by another ICHD3 diagnosis. Physical and neurological examinations are typically unremarkable but if sensory changes are noted, then this is suggestive of secondary trigeminal neuralgia. MRI is not required for the diagnosis, but some guidelines recommend that it be done in all patients. It may demonstrate the abnormal blood vessel loop, as well as other pathologies like multiple sclerosis, tumours or even strokes. Differentials include a dental source of the pain, which may need intraoral x-rays, temporomandibular joint disorder, migraines or cluster headaches, mandibular osteomyelitis, temporal arthritis, and postherpetic neuralgia. The aim of therapy is pain relief, with multiple options available. Medical therapy is typically the first approach. Carbamazepine is the first line of these, along with oxcarbazepine, with 90% of patients achieving initial pain control on these agents. Lamotrigine and gabapentin are considered second-line agents less effective than carbamazepine. The more traditional analgesics like paracetamol, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and opioids 
are not usually helpful in treating especially type 1 pain. If medical therapy then fails, surgery may be explored, which can include microvascular decompression as a first-line procedure, which is a form of open surgery involving identifying the aberrant blood vessel and moving it away from the point of compression on the trigeminal nerve. The long-term efficacy ranges with 62 to 89% of patients being pain-free at follow-up between 3 and 11 years. It features a low risk of severe complications that include death and stroke, but does feature a risk of hearing loss and facial hyposthesia. Ablative procedures such as stereotactic radiosurgery, trigeminal gangliolysis and balloon compression are other options.